Maryland Valley High School. I am going to be a, I'm currently a rising senior. Um, Xavier? Hi, my name is Xavier Humphrey. Um, I go to Susquehanna Township High School um, and I am currently a rising senior too. Um, Danielle, did you want to talk now or did you want to? <laughs> Sure, I'll go. Uh, good morning. My name is Danielle Martin. I'm the Academic Success Coordinator from Temple University Harrisburg in partnership with Joyce and the World Affairs Council. So thank you for being here. Um, Ariana. Oh. Hi, thank you so much for being here. My name is Ariana and I'm a junior at Lebanon Valley College. Uh, Mackenzie. Hi, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. My name is Mackenzie Kuhn and I just graduated from Penn State Harrisburg. Congratulations. So what are you doing now? What do you, what are you, now that you've graduated? I'm taking the year off and then I'm looking at doing a master's program abroad for international relations. Good, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Sahiti? Hi, Mr. Governor. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Sahiti Kulkarni and I will be a rising freshman at Cumberland Valley High School. Brilliant, great. Thank you. Hello, Governor Wolf. My name is Caleb Liebig. Uh, I go to Bishop McDevitt High School and I'll be a rising senior come the fall. Uh, Sandhya? Hi, my name is Sandhya. I'll be a rising sophomore at Conestoga High School. Uh, so this is what a, a very varied group in terms of of the uh, where you you are in, in your your academic uh, experience. So thank you for for being here. This is great. So camera back. Is, am I? She, I think, or, Arushi maybe next. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for speaking with us. My name is Arushi uh, Dadia, and I'm a rising freshman in Cumberland Valley High School. Uh, Bella. Hi, my name is Bella. I'm a rising senior at Cheltenham High School. Uh, Anthony? Hi, uh, thank you for being here. Um, Anthony, um, I'm a rising um, 10th grader at the Harvard School. Omega? Hi, I just first wanted to say it's such an honor to have you here with us today, and thank you for taking your time to talk with us. My name is Mega Shin Mugum, and I'm a rising junior attending Cumberland Valley High School. Lindsay? Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm a grad student at Penn State. And, okay, great. Thank you. Aaron? Um, hey, Governor Wolf. My name is Aaron, and I'm a rising senior at Cumberland Valley High School. Thank you for being here, uh, like the rest of us. Thank you. So there seem to be a lot of Cumberland Valley students here today. You know, yep. Yep. let me just say that, 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 that as a fellow citizen of the West Bank of the Susquehanna River, I, I applaud you for being here. It's great to have you here. Um, Kennedy, I think you're next. Hello, good morning. My name is Kennedy Holt. I am a college intern with the World Affairs Council, Harrisburg, and I'm the college intern and I'm studying political science and sociology. Kennedy, are you at uh, Susquehanna? Uh, no, sir. I'm in college right now, Shippensburg. Shippensburg. Okay. Okay. Um, Anisha? Hi, thank you for being here. My name is Anisha. I go to Manheim Township High School and I'll be an upcoming senior. Congratulations. Uh, I think Liam, are you next? Hi, Governor Wolf. My name is Liam. I go to the Chambersburg Area Magnet School and I'll be a 10th grader this year. And I think Gail is the last one. Hi, my name is Gail and I'm a rising sophomore at Upper Marion High School. One, one more, Michelle. We have uh, Joe Wayne White here um, in place of our director, uh, Link Martin. Well, I do want to point out, I see a Kevin. Is there a Kevin Hanson? That's the governor's office. That's what oh, okay. office. Well, forget Kevin, then we don't, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, everyone, and good morning, Governor Wolf. Uh, my name is Joanne White. I am the Associate Director of Finance here at Temple Harrisburg, and I want to welcome you virtually to Temple Harrisburg. We're thrilled to have you participate with our Summer Owls program today. Um, what an exciting opportunity for all these young people. It's not every day you get a one-on-one -on -one with your governor, so, you know, make the most of it. Uh, Link Martin, our director, is unable to be here 
today, but as his proxy, I want to extend our sincere appreciation to you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with these young people who are the future of the Commonwealth. And we may be looking at, you know, governor number 62 right here among us, uh, time will tell. So um, I would like to just indulge in a little personal note and I apologize for taking everyone's time, but I would like to thank you governor for uh, your leadership and your tireless efforts over the last 15 months and navigating us through over beyond this pandemic. And I, I've many a day have been thankful I have not been in your shoes. So I did just want to commend you for, <laughs> for that. Um, but none of you all came here to listen to me today. So I'm going to wrap it up by saying thank you to everyone. Thank you, Governor Wolf. Thank you to all you summer owls. Thank you, Danielle and Joyce for putting this all together. I think this is an exciting opportunity for all of you to make the most of it. And I'm going to zip it and okay. turn it over. Well, we are now live on Facebook, and I'd like to welcome all of our viewers uh, and Penn Live readers. This is Joyce Davis, and I am the uh, outreach and opinion editor for Penn Live, but also the president and CEO of the World Affairs Council of Harrisburg. And we're delighted to be partnering with Temple University Harrisburg in this summer internship and enrichment program. We have students from all over the state high school, college, graduate school, and they are all quite eager to engage with our governor, Governor Tom Wolf, who's taken time out of an excessively busy schedule to offer them some words of encouragement uh, as they look to their careers. So governor, we would like to welcome you and to get, we know your time is limited. So to get started, the first question I think, and camera is gonna be helping me with some of these questions, camera Bailey, one of our interns. But the first question to get us started is, Please let them know what was the motivation for your to enter into politics? What was it that actually inspired you and galvanized you to take this path? Well, that's, that's uh, uh, first of all, Joyce, thank you very much for, for having me here. This is a great honor. And I think this is really a, a, a good thing that, that, that you, your organization, Temple, uh, the World Affairs Council, uh, are, are doing to, to bring people together. And I think this is a really important topic to talk about public service, what, what, what leads people to, to go into it. What, what led me to go into to public service? Uh, I, I, as you know, I'm not a politician. I have not, this is the first position I ever ran for and I won. Um, but uh, before this, I was in, in business, but I was, was very active in, in my community in, in York, especially in the city of York. And I saw a lot of things that, that you know, we were doing well. We had a lot of uh, good organizations, nonprofit organizations in York. We had a lot of uh, companies that really cared deeply about the city of York. We had city government that I think cared deeply about the city of York and was doing a good job. Uh, but we just seemed to, to not make the, the progress we need to be needed to, to make. And, and uh, we, we had one, one of the, the uh, uh, experts, urban experts who came into to York to sort of help us uh, navigate through this said, you know, there's an inside game and there's an outside game. In New York, you're doing the inside game really well. You have all these great organizations, very dedicated individuals who care deeply about the community. But you live in a fairly hostile environment when it comes to cities, especially third class cities. Uh, in Pennsylvania, and that's the outside game. You're not doing real well in the outside game. And the outside game, in many ways, is determined in Harrisburg. Uh, and it's the outside game that determines that we don't have fair funding of our schools. Uh, and, and it's the outside game that determines that certain people are fine when it comes to uh, economic opportunities and certain people are not. Uh, it's the outside game that determines why the cost of a higher education is, is so so high in Pennsylvania, even in public universities. Uh, and so I said, I'm, okay, well, uh, I was retired and, and uh, uh, instead of, you know, butting my head against the wall and just doing the inside game in New York, I decided to try my hand at the outside game. I, and I thought I just didn't want to be on my deathbed at some point. And I am an old man, but, you know, I didn't want to be at the end of my life and, and sort of say, okay, you know, you should have done something. You should have actually tried it, even if you didn't win. So I, I did it. I was an improbable uh, candidate uh, in a crowded four-way race. And then I ran in the general election against an incumbent. An incumbent governor has never been defeated, at least in 100 years in Pennsylvania. And I won. And uh, so uh, I've been 
trying to, to do the things that I set, set out to do to, to try to uh, address the issues of this outside game that we really need to change, make fair. Well, yeah, well, I know a lot of people, as Joanne was, was, was saying, a lot of people believe that you are the right person for a most difficult time uh, and that your actions probably saved untold numbers of lives. So uh, you should be pr at least feel good about that, <laughs> despite all the heat you've taken. But enough of that, I'm going to turn it over <laughs> now to camera so that camera can at least begin our questioning. She is a moderator in training. So take it away, camera. Take it away, camera. Hi, Mr. Wolf. So um, I have a first question for you. Um, as you look over your career, what do you consider your highest achievements and what were the most difficult challenges you faced? Well, the, the, uh, the, let me answer the second question uh, first. The, 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 hard, the hardest thing has been the last 15 months, as Joyce said, the, the, going through the pandemic, there were no instructions, uh, the, the operating instructions, no, no directions. Uh, and, and we were doing things really on the, on the kind of sort of how, how, how do you deal with something that we've, at least in my lifetime, never seen before. I guess you can go back to the pandemic of the early 20th century, the Spanish flu pandemic and say, you know, you, there's some, but I don't think we, we handled that real well in hindsight. And so that, that wasn't much of a guide. And, and, and the, the really, we, we were really unprepared for this all across the world. So it wasn't just in, in Pennsylvania. So it was the, we, we had to do a lot of, of, of scrambling. So I think that was the toughest thing. But, but I'm really proud of what, what we've done here in Pennsylvania. And, and we were talking earlier, I think Pennsylvanians get, deserve a lot of credit because we, we, we are now at the top of the charts in terms of, uh, I mean, there are a couple of things that, that we need to look at right now. The obvious, our strategy for defeating this pandemic, this COVID-19 has been the vaccines. Uh, pure and simple. And we are now, I think, eighth in the country when it comes to the percentage of the population that has had at least one dose of the vaccine. Uh, and we're, I think, what, uh, I think 11th in the country when it comes to, to the, uh, um, uh, the number of, I'm sorry, the, the, the number of, of uh, second doses, 17th, I'm sorry, in the country, 13th in the country when it comes to total doses used. So we're, we, we've done, a, a, I think, a, a good job of getting vaccines in, into arms. In, in terms of, of how we've done throughout the pandemic, we're 40th in the country in terms of the cases uh, per 100,000. Uh, you know, out of 50 states, that's, that's, that's not, not bad. Um, we uh, are in deaths, uh, we're, uh, uh, about 11th uh, in the country, which is high, but that doesn't control for, we have a, a vulnerable population. Pennsylvania has a generally an older population uh, than, than the average state. So without taking that into account, you know, we're, we're up there, but uh, we're, we're not too hard, much above the, the national average there. In terms of the last 14 days, uh, we actually are below the national average in terms of cases. <clears throat> I think we're we rank 34th. Uh, hospitalizations, we rank 23rd. Uh, we're, we're right at the national average in hospitalizations per 100,000. And in deaths per 100,000, we're right at the national average uh, for the last 14 days. So, we, I, you know, we, we've, we've done uh, some, some good things, I think, in terms of trying to address the, the pandemic. But there's no question in my mind of all the challenges. And remember, I'm a Democratic governor and I've been. Uh, working with a Republican majority legislature for the entire time I've been here. Uh, but the toughest thing has been this last 15 months. Thank you so much for answering that question. Um, sure. We have some questions in the chat. Um, Xavier, I was wondering if you would like to um, ask your question. Yes, I would, thank you very much. Um, so I was wondering what is one thing that you regret or hope future governors will learn from a, a mistake you made or have made? Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't uh, made any, Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's, that's, that's a fair question. I, I, I'm, I think the, um, one of the things that, that uh, I did uh, to try to, to do a better job with the vaccines was to create a bipartisan task force. Uh, that I worked really closely with. And, and on the task force were some very conservative Republicans, uh, you know, with whom I, 
in, in an ordinary time would have would have said, you know, we just don't have anything in common. And politically, we have a lot of disagreements, but we were able to work together, liberal Democrats, conservative Republicans. Uh, and I think we, we I just had a, a thank you luncheon at the governor's residence. Uh, and and we, we all talked about this, that, that we were all surprised at how we can get together. And one of the things that that I think doesn't happen enough to your, your, your point, Xavier, one of the things that doesn't happen enough here in Harrisburg is that, that we don't take enough time to talk to each other. We yell at each other a lot and, and we, you know, we throw um, uh, insults across the, the partisan aisle uh, to, to each other. And I think you could be forgiven if you're a, a legislator uh, thinking that this is just sort of the normal way it is. Uh, I used to, to uh, back before the pandemic, and I'll do it again after the after we get back to, to some semblance of normalcy here, and we're, we're almost there, uh, but used to have receptions for new senators and new representatives of both parties. And I remember thinking, and then I said it to them, and, and it's true, this is probably, this is when they all just get here. This is probably the last time we're actually going to be, you know, talking with, with, uh, uh, other uh, uh, members of the Senate and the House, and and uh, from from the other party, the rest of the time you'll be spending in an echo chamber, basically. And and I think that's what I would would would, would like to see more of. If if we could figure out how to to talk to each other more, and and you know we're going to disagree. I get that, but but what I what I also found from from the, the task force is that when a democracy works. Well, it really does work. I mean, because I learn stuff from folks who come in with a different perspective, and they claim they learn stuff from me too. Uh, we just need to to make sure we we create the the opportunities for for people starting out from different ideological standpoints to actually talk to each other a little more. Um, Bella, would you like to ask your question? Yes. Um, so what's one goal that you came into office with that you now feel has been accomplished since your term is almost over? Well, let, let me let me just go through one of the things I I, I think in politics that the, the one of the things I don't have that the, the typical politician should have is a little bit of a showboat mentality. The, the, the willingness to go out and, and show off a little bit. And I, I I've never done that. I didn't do that in my business. And I, I don't I don't feel real comfortable doing that here. So I was trying to think of what what actually, uh, uh, you know, we've accomplished. I say we all of us in the administration and, and the General Assembly. And and so here are a couple of things that that, that that I'm very proud of. Well, one is that, that we established at least a fair funding formula for schools. Now, we're only funding it to, you know, like, 11%, hopefully after this budget, a little more than that, but it really ought to be 100% fully funded. Uh, there's no excuse for not, not uh, sending money to schools uh, in, in terms of, of their need. So Pennsylvania has some of the <coughs> best schools. I know someone's here from the Lower Marion School District, but we have a lot of schools that just are starved of, of the resources they, they need. And it's, it's just a, a, an accident of, of geography. Your zip code really does determine the resources that you have in, in Pennsylvania. And, and that's obviously not fair for the students or educators in those starved school districts. But the point I'm making to my fellow Pennsylvanians is it's not fair to any of us. So we starve a child in, I live in New York County, I, but we starve a child in Philadelphia of, of, a, of a good education. That's, that's hurting me. That's, that's one less person who might come up with a cure for a disease that affects my family or come up with a killer app or a good product or service that could make my life a lot better. And so I think, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we have a fair funding formula. I'm not proud of the fact that I've been trying every, every year and, and sooner or later, I think we'll, we'll get there. But uh, we need to fully fund that, that fair funding formula. Um, but I'm proud that we actually at least have the formula in place now. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that, that uh, when I came in, education had been generally across the board starved in terms of the state funding and about the, and, and still counting, we have about a billion and a half dollars, the new dollars that have gone into education uh, and that's special education, basic education, early childhood education. And I'm proud of that. The expansion of Medicaid was one of the first things I did. I'm really proud of that. 
uh, we have uh, dr driven the uninsured population of Pennsylvania down to its lowest ever, uh, still about 5%. So we still have work to do. And I think the Affordable Care Act under which I expanded Medicaid uh, is certainly not perfect, but it was a really good step in the right direction. And, and, and I'm hoping that, that uh, we can keep moving forward on that. Legalize medical marijuana, strengthen mental health parity laws, uh, Pennsylvania used the Affordable Care Act to create its own exchange, which has saved uh, money for people who want health insurance, uh, have a clean slate law so that, that people uh, are not forever uh, uh, held hostage to some youthful indiscretion, uh, uh, and, and I think that's important. Uh, Act 77, uh, you know, most places, or not most places, but a lot of states are really trying to suppress the vote. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, we actually increased access to the polls, and and uh, I know <laughs> there's some people want to suppress it, uh, resuppress it, and, and uh, as long as I'm governor, I'll veto that. Uh, so I'm I'm proud of of the expansion of of the, the, the franchise. I mean, if you look back in American history, we celebrate the expansions of the franchise. You know, the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments, uh, the elimination in the 1830s of property qualifications in most states. Uh, the uh, 19th Amendment, uh, giving women the right to vote, and the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Acts of the mid-60s. Those are the things we celebrate. We don't celebrate Jim Crow. We don't celebrate the, the uh, limitations we placed on access to the suppression of, of the vote. We don't celebrate the fact that we didn't allow women to vote until just over 100 years ago. Those are things that I think we, we need to keep in mind. And so I'm proud, and I think uh, historically I'm on the right track in terms of increasing uh, access to the polls. Uh, I'm proud of the regional greenhouse gas initiatives. You know, I think we're, we're moving forward with that. I, I think one of the greatest things we can do for the environment is to actually get out of this false you know, uh, conflict that we create that says, if you wanna do something good for the environment, you're doing something bad for jobs. Well, let's, 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 we, we gotta get out of that, that, that false choice. It's not, that's not true. Uh, we can we can do both of these things, and, and I think regional greenhouse gas initiative is a cap and invest system that will give us give Pennsylvania hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Uh, and by the way, I don't want to get too down in the weeds here, but we export about a third of the energy we generate uh, in Pennsylvania to non Pennsylvanians. The Reggie uh, cap and invest system basically says we're going to now figure out a way to uh, put a price on carbon. And that'll be paid, a third of that will be paid by non-Pennsylvanians. And, and half of that under a good bill that's in the House and Senate right now, half of that would go to workers, their families and communities that are directly affected. If a coal fire plant closes, um, uh, you know, the, this money will be available. So I think Reggie is, is a good good way to, to make the movement that we all want to make to that sustainable energy future and that we're going to get to anyway. I think as recent power plant closures in the West and Ohio showed, you know, it's, it's, it's happening anyway. So the question is, do you want to have it in a way where, where workers and communities have some way to make the transition, or you just want to say, hey, tough luck, you know, the, the economy, you know, the technology has moved on and, and you're, you're out of luck. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Pennsylvania is actually the first state to have a Pennsylvania a farm bill. Uh, there's been a national farm bill, but we have a farm bill here in PA. We have a GI bill. You can buy uh, wine and beer in the grocery stores. We actually have pension reform. Um, uh, I, I put into place a gift ban. You know, I think ethics are really important in public life. And so I have a gift ban. I even pay for water, uh, which, you know, really bugs people. Uh, and, and I think, you know, we, we've been very responsible with, with the budget. Started out with a budget deficit when I took over two to three billion dollars a year. We're now in a budget surplus, and that's before you add in the money that came from the federal government. So, so I'm, I think a lot, a lot of good things have happened in the last six and a half, seven years, and, and I'm very proud of those things. Um, we definitely appreciate your passion in trying to, you know, fix all of these things that you wanted to fix when you came into office. Um, Caleb, would you like to ask a question? I would. Uh, thank you, Mr. Governor, for being here. Like I said before, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Now, I, I come from an uh, educational household. My mother's a teacher, so education is something that's uh, very important to me. And you've established yourself as a uh, very pro-education as a governor. Um, yeah. Now, as your term expires and you have a new successor, 
What kind of educational policies would you like your successor to enact? And what are some hurdles that you think that the, that these uh, educational leg uh, legislation might uh, go through? Well, the, there are a couple of things. First, obviously, I think I already mentioned the fair funding formula. I think we need to make sure that we're, we're funding schools fairly, but we also need to make sure we're funding them adequately. In, in some cases, we have some of the best, and some of you are from the you know, best funded schools in, in Pennsylvania, uh, and, and they're, they're really outstanding. Some of you go to schools that have just frankly been, been starved. We, we need to make sure that we have adequate and, and fair funding for schools. Second thing is we need to make sure that there's something you know ready for you after after base after high school, so that, that if you're going to go to college or you're going to go to to get technical education, that you have all the options that that you have, and and that you're not going to be thwarted by the cost. And I think we need to do a a, a lot better there uh, in terms of of making uh, post secondary education more accessible and more affordable. Uh, it's always important to make it relevant. Uh, and, and I think uh, folks in universities, colleges, apprenticeship training programs, whatever, uh, are doing a pretty good job of, of trying to make sure that they stay, stay relevant. Um, uh, I think the, we, we need to invest in uh, infrastructure so that, that we have, uh, there are a lot of places in the, in the state that just don't have adequate access to broadband, even if their school does. I mean, some, some kids have to come to school early to go to the library to, to access the internet, that shouldn't be. They should be able to do their homework at home and, and have adequate access to, to the internet. Uh, but again, uh, Caleb, as I said, I think the, the, the big thing is that, that we all need to recognize that education is something that affects us all. Pennsylvania does not, does not do a good job uh, at the state level of supporting public education, of education in general. I mean, you can look at, at our high schools, our early pre-K folks, you can look at early childhood, you can look at our state universities, Penn State, Pitt, they're among the most expensive state universities in the United States. But we need to do a better job. And I think that starts with a recognition that, that education is, is something that, that we all have a vested interest in. I have a stake in your out, the outcome of your election, uh, your, your education. I mean, I, I, I if, if, if you don't, do well, that, that's gonna hurt me uh, and, and for all of you. And, and I think that's the kind of recognition that we, we lack in Pennsylvania, which is why Pennsylvania, I think is 45th in the United States in terms of the state share of funding for education. We, we do pretty well overall on average, but the, the, the great disparities and that disparity starts with the fact that, that too much of almost two thirds of our public education is funded at the local level. So uh, I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to, to have a reputation for thinking education is, is important. What I'd like to see is, is a much broader appreciation of that, that fact. There's nothing that the state government does that is more important than education. I mean, we, we're also, also responsible for a big chunk of, you know, highways and that kind of stuff. And that's important, but I don't think there's anything more important than, than, than education. Thank you, Governor. I 100% agree. <laughs> Thank you. Um, since I believe we are getting close to the end of our time together, um, I was wondering um, if being governor is exactly what you expected it to be, and was there anything that you were not prepared for other than the virus? Yeah, I mean, uh, I knew I wasn't running for student council president, and maybe some of you here are student council president. It's not quite like that. Uh, and, and you, you really are uh, out there and you're, and I, I remember uh, laughing about a, a story I heard of somebody who uh, ran for student council president and won 80% of the vote and lost 20, you know, it was 80 to 20, just overwhelming landslide victory. And she came home crying saying, you know, I, I you know, 20% of the people in, in my school don't like me. And, and I remember laughing at that, thinking that was really funny. And, and uh, yet, you know, it's easy to feel that way. You have you have a lot of people that 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 are second guessing what you do, or saying, "Hey, you know, that was a really stupid thing you just did or said, or or a, a, you know, measure that you you passed." Um, you know, I think I, having having been in in business, uh, I, I I got a sense of of uh, you know how you, you have to actually sell things, and, and business is a lot more political than than you think. It's not just pressing a button and everybody salutes and does what you say. 
uh, in politics is that that same thing, but you're really much more out in the open and and everybody will rejoice, you know, this, this is, uh, you, you, that's, that's, that is the way it should be. Uh, it's, you should be second guessed. And, and it's what, what makes, I think, uh, a democracy so precious. And, and it's, by the way, why, why I think, you know, we, we are far ahead of the Chinas of the world and the Russias, because we do allow uh, open discussion. And it, and it actually leads people like me, uh, who are governor, if, if we're doing our job to say, Huh, what, did I do the right thing there or not? You have to you have to make a decision. You have to move forward, and and sometimes you you're going to be good. Sometimes you make a mistake, and 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 the critics are absolutely right. Um, that that was the hardest thing for me. The, the the public nature of this. I was used to making mistakes. I was used to to uh, making decisions and having people second guess me. But I wasn't. Uh, uh, I, I don't think as as ready and or uh, adept at, at, at understanding how, how important it is that, that now you have a public forum and, and all the mistakes you make are now out there for everybody to see. And, and that was the, that was the, that was an adjustment for me. So I was incorrect in assuming what time we ended. So we do have time for a few more questions. So Sahiti, would you like to ask your question? Yes, so thank you so much, Governor, for taking your time to talk with us. Sure. So my question is that recently the GOP cleared a voting law bill that you had firmly disagreed with. I wanted to know what were some of the biggest reasons that affected your decision on this? There were a couple, um, and, and we could probably get into a, a, a long discussion, but the whole, the effect of, of that bill, and I wrote a letter to the sponsor in the House saying, okay, here are some areas we could, we could probably agree on. But, but in, in the whole, it, it was, as I said earlier, it was a voter suppression bill. It, it actually made it harder, uh, made access to the polls, made the polls less accessible. And, and I don't think that's what you want to do in a democracy. And that's why I disagree with it. If, 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 we, if we want to increase access to the polls, and, and you know, I think Act 77 uh, did that back in 2019, uh, and the, the numbers in the 2020 election, I think, bear that out. Actually, the, the turnout in, in the primary in May, this past May term, bear that out. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to look at, at, at the election laws and say, you know, can, can we make them better? But make, suppressing the vote, making it harder to vote does not, in my mind, make it better. And that's why I oppose it. Thank you so much, Mr. Governor. Sure. I would like to now call on Aaron to ask his question. Hey, Governor Wolf, I appreciate you being here again. Um, I know you are a firm believer in immigrants making the state a better place, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I wanna talk specifically about the children of these immigrants. I have friends, I know families that are trying to get their children into college and their problem comes down to financial aid. And um, they're not like you and me where they can just go to the bank and get a student loan. Um, they can't get a student loan because of the status they have in this country or this state. Uh, I want to know what are your thoughts on improving the lives of these kids, my friends, and those families, and what is Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania doing different to help them? Yeah, that's a great question. I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that we can we can change that. You know, there, there used to be. Uh, uh, undocumented uh, immigrants, children of undocumented immigrants could not get this, even if they lived in Pennsylvania, could not get the, the residency discount on tuition. Uh, I think we changed that. Uh, and, and, but as you point out, there are probably still things that we, we ought to do uh, uh, to, to uh, again, this is something that, that really affects us all. I don't care what your background is. If, if you can go to school and, and learn the things you need to learn to create product services, cures that, that are gonna make my life better. I'm, I should be doing everything I can uh, to encourage that. So, so to the extent that, that we're not doing that, I think that's a mistake. And, and especially, especially in Pennsylvania, my ancestors came here for all kinds of different reasons. And, and, and I think William Penn uh, did the right thing by basically back in the time when you know religious intolerance was the name of the game, you know he said no this is a place that's that's open for everybody. I think Voltaire said that aside from maybe one or two cantons in Switzerland, Pennsylvania was probably the freest place in in the world at that point. This is you know the 1700s, uh, but that's our history. Our history is one of welcome and openness, and to the extent that 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 we 
uh, you know, embrace that the way he did. I think Pennsylvania's prosperity has come because we are such a diverse and have been historically such an inclusive state. We shouldn't. We should not go against that. So I, I, I will uh, take another look at, at what's happening in the, uh, the, the affordability area, uh, actually for everybody, uh, not just for, for uh, uh, the children of immigrants, but, but everybody in Pennsylvania, we need to do a better job of making post-secondary education more affordable. Okay, so I would like to quickly take um, Anthony and then Anisha's questions. All right. Uh, hi, thank you for um, being here. So my question was, how did you deal with the pushback you received based on your decisions during the pandemic? Uh, I, uh, that, that, that's a great question. I mean, I, I, uh, as a human being, I, you know, you, you just never liked it to have um, folks say nasty things about you, but, but at, at some point you, you, you just have to hunker down and say, here's, I think this is the right thing to do. Uh, and I think that was, that was uh, a real test of it. As I said earlier, uh, I, I had gotten used to, to making decisions that were not necessarily always popular and, and I have to explain myself, but never had to do it as publicly. So dealing with, with the, the public pushback was, was, was really interesting. Uh, and uh, um, but but I think I'm I'm, I'm learning to, to deal with it a little little better now and 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 I, and I think it's it's uh, again you, you have to have uh, an inner core that says I, I'm doing the right thing and and I'm I'm convinced that I'm doing the right thing I might be wrong but but I'm trying to do the best that I can and this is with the information I have with the resources I have. I'm doing the best uh, uh, I can, and and I think you have to, if you if if you have a good strong moral compass, uh, and and then and 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 you you actually look at something honestly, and you you've done th something in an honest open way. I, you know, I I think you you have to allow people to have their own opinion, but you you got to make sure that in your own mind you, you did the best you can. Okay, thank and yeah, thank you for answering that question. And um, Anisha, would you like to ask your question and then Kennedy so that t governor could um, answer both questions at the same time? Hi, thank you again for speaking with us. Uh, my question was, how have you dealt in more recent years with like increased political polarization? Um, and has that made your job more difficult? So sh should I wait for Kennedy's question too? You, you're assuming that I can remember both questions in here, right? Yes, I, we have faith in you that you can remember both. <laughs> oh, wow, good luck. Okay, Kennedy. Yes, so my question was, the institutionalized concept that the success of an individual is predetermined by the body and environment to which one resides. How do you plan to combat the ideology for schools, specifically Harrisburg School District, John Harris Campus, and what resources do you plan on providing or implementing? Okay, now let me see if I can remember the, the question. The, the, the bitter partisanship, that I, I talked a little bit about that earlier. I think um, some, of, some of that is, is just, an, an, if you look at American history, some of that is just a natural part of being a democracy. If you, if you really don't want anybody to second guess you, if you didn't, don't want anybody to criticize you, then you, you don't really wanna be in a democracy. Uh, and if, if you don't want to have people criticize you, then I don't think your, your system is going to be as strong. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, in, a, in, a private, in the private sector, you have customers who can, can tell you whether you're, you're, you're doing a good job or not. In, in, the, in a democracy, you have voters that, that, uh, and folks like Joyce you know, who, who, are, who tell you whether you're doing a good job or not, or they think you're doing a good job or not. And, and I think that, that actually makes the, the system stronger. Obviously, if it gets too far to the point where you stop talking to each other and you, you just start throwing stones at each other, then that's that becomes kind of stupid. Uh, but I don't think we're there. I think where where we are is people are actually uh, maybe sometimes yelling uh, at each other, but but we are talking and 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 uh, that actually makes us better and and stronger. Um, you, there's a lot of concern about the the bitterness. Uh, and I think that's that's reasonable. On the other hand, we've had periods in American history when there hasn't been much debate at all, and I don't think that's I think that was worse. Uh, for example, 
I have a PhD in political science. And, and uh, when I studied the US House of Representatives uh, in the 70s, the theory then was that really there is no conflict. You know, it's a sort of social system. As a, if you really want to understand Congress, it's uh, uh, how, uh, you know, sort of the folk ways of, uh, you know, the, 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 how people work together and stuff like that. Well, it turns out it was a pretty stagnant system. Uh, and, and while I'm not a real fan of the bitter partisanship that we have right now, I don't want to go back to that either. So the, 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 the task force, which is why I keep coming back to the task force, because, you know, very conservative, I mean, really very varied political opinions, but we were willing to talk to each other. And, and I think we ended up uh, making that, coming up with better public policy as a result of that um, um, willingness to disagree in a, in, a, in a relatively agreeable fashion. So the, the bitterness is, is uh, something that, that I think we don't want to get out of hand. On the other hand, we don't want to get to the point where we say, I don't want any disagreement. We, we need to have the disagreement. And now in, in terms of, of Kennedy, your, your question, uh, I, I, this is why I think the uh, things, a, a number of things that, that, that I think we needed to, to do uh, in terms of, of education. Obviously, the, uh, the, we have limitations in terms of what public policy can do to get into somebody's heart and soul. And, and, uh, but I think we can, we can do things to set an example. But we can also do things that, that don't exacerbate the divisions that, that exist or the predispositions of people to be maybe less than kind and loving to each other. Uh, one of them is fairly funding our schools. Uh, and, and in doing that to, to make sure that we're, we're fully funding it uh, in, in a way that recognizes the differences in, in each, you know, the, the different things that kids bring to school. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we, we need to make sure that we're, we're doing everything with counseling. Uh, that, that we we recognize uh, the the unique traumas that, that folks in different settings might might face uh, that we haven't taken into account, uh, and that again gets back to fully and fairly funding uh, our education system. Uh, I think we need to to make sure that we we uh, do a better job of saying you know you're in school and, and you're learning. Uh, I need to make sure that you have a sense of optimism, some hope. That, that, that there's something waiting for you out there, an opportunity, not a, not a, a gift, but, but an opportunity, whether it's in, in the area of housing or uh, further education or jobs, uh, food. I mean, all those things that, that we, we need to, to make sure that we do everything we can. Uh, and I think the, the, the school is, is, is the, the place, is the intersection of public policy and, and the individual life and where, where we are permitted to, to, as a public entity, as the government, to actually intrude on the lives of our fellow citizens. We ought to do it right and we ought to do it adequately. And, and we're not at this point. I think we can do a much, much better job. We'll never get, I don't think, to, a, to perfection in this regard, but, but in, in our school system, I think we have a really great opportunity to do a much better job of, of making sure that the, the, the challenges and issues that everybody faces, um, and that some more than others, uh, that we deal with those um, in, in a much better way uh, uh, than we do right now. We greatly appreciate you being here today to answer all of our questions, but we are wondering if you have any closing remarks to encourage the students here today. Well, yeah, thank you. And I, again, thank you for, for uh, um, the, the, your questions have been great, and I, I really appreciate your, your, your interest in, in, in asking the questions. Uh, it makes me feel important, so I appreciate that. Uh, let, let me just put a pitch in for, for public service. Um, you're going to have a lot of choices. You're obviously all bright folks, and, and you're going to have a lot of options and decisions to make um, as you go through school uh, and, and beyond. Uh, let me put a pitch in for public service. I, I was in the private sector uh, for most of my life, uh, and uh, I came to public service relatively late. I was Secretary of Revenue when Ed Rendell was governor for a couple of years. But other than that, this has been it. And it is really rewarding. I, I mean, you, you can go into the private sector uh, and, and maybe uh, after a number of, of, of years, you might get to a point where you make a customer feel, ha feel happy, 
and that's that's great. But here, right from the get go, you come into public service. And you can really make a big difference. I, I talked about the inside game, outside game. You can do a lot of things uh, with the inside game, but so many places are doing a pretty good job with the inside game. It's the outside game we really need. We need we need help, uh, and we need smart people uh, who really want to make lives better. Uh, and uh, our, our democratic form of government does give us the ability to to do that. Again, when it comes to education, when it comes to infrastructure, like broadband. When it comes to trying to, to to help different different segments of the economy, I think we we have the opportunity to do. Government does not often, or maybe I should say, doesn't always. Maybe often, depending on your point of view, do do what it should to make lives better. But there is no other place in our society where, as an individual, you're going to have the chance to to actually make make somebody's life better than in public service. So, let me just leave you with with that thought as you consider all the options you have in your your lives and you're going to have a lot uh, don't dismiss public service uh, it's 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 really been uh, when i i know when i as i look back on my life i'm going to look back on this as the brightest chapter and i was a peace corps volunteer graduate school all these things successful in business uh, this is going to be the most um satisfying part of my life i'm pretty sure so Keep that in mind as you make your own decisions and go through your own options. So, Camera, thank you very much for having me. And Joyce, Joanne, thank you for, for sponsoring this and, and uh, everything that you're doing to lead this. And, and kids, thank you for, for your great questions. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Governor. And we know you have a busy schedule, so we're going to allow you to leave. The students will stay behind so that we can discuss. And we will say goodbye to our audience on Facebook now. Thank you again, Governor, and all the best of luck as you continue to lead us. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks a lot. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.